Yeah. I pull up roto window shining. I pull up roto window shining. Yeah. I pull up roto window shining. Hi, hotties, kettles, tea stars, you're here for hot tea. All commentary is alleged, and in my opinion, this is for entertainment purposes only. Just giving you guys a little disclaimer, I am not feeling that well, in case you can hear that in my voice, which is also why I wasn't able to do the live with Millie Chan today. I know I told you guys I would be over there at one, I just couldn't make it. So I do apologize for that, but I do want to go ahead and push these videos out that I had waiting for you all because I know you guys are waiting to hear my thoughts and opinions on Saturday's episode, which we basically already did the review on Sunday, but I'm just wanting to break down some clips and you guys love the debuncture. So of course I had to put together a debuncture because the energy that I sensed with the women were very telling. And like I'm going to say, and like I've said in many of my videos, one of the very things that I point out about male identity identified women. I think this is actually a great scene that we can use to prove Kimmy and Letitia's contradictory ways. So let's get into it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the post notification bell so you guys are up to date each and every time that I upload. Libido the Mule, I'm on your ass because you allowed your husband to attack me. But I'm also on your ass because I sense this nasty energy from you when you deal with other women. And I just want to show and prove. I don't say anything because I'm hating on these people. I don't know these people personally. I'm merely viewing and judging the characters displayed on our tv screens and the things that they put on social media that being said there is a lot to break down in saturday's episode as far as all the things that are contradictory to the things that kimmy has been seeing throughout these seasons there's not much to elaborate on when it comes to leticia because we all know she's full of shit and the storyline that she is coming up with in my opinion is backfiring i believe marceau is going to railroad her with that storyline as he should and the only reason I say that because I do not defend women that consistently attack other women all for the validation from other men and I also don't like jealous spirits and I believe Letitia and Kimmy have a jealous spirit and it just doesn't sit right with me because a lot of times women with jealous spirits are willing to overlook wrongdoings and wrong things just because they don't like you and I'm just the type of person whether I like you or not I just don't like wrong we should always be able to call a spirit to spade. Also, the body language is extremely loud in the scene with the women. I've been consistent with stating Libido and Letitia really admire male, and at the very end of everything, they are jealous and embarrassed because her actions force them to look themselves and their marriages in the mirror, and it actually highlights and pinpoints major marital issues in the other marriages, and they blame male for that, and they also try to humble her each and every time they get the opportunity to. Whenever there's a time where they feel like they can humiliate her or there's a moment of her living in, in her truth that they feel like is embarrassing and humiliating that they wouldn't necessarily speak on, they try to humble her with comments or showing actions of not being in alliance with her. For example, we're gonna hear Libido the Mule speak about how she felt unprotected by her husband, but in the same breath, there was a scene that she had with walkie talkie where walkie talkie male's baby mom was trying to hold himself accountable and be accountable for the fact that he wasn't protecting his wife in that scene you would hear libido the mule ask him well why is it that your wife the person he should be protecting gets to be the happiest in the scenario when the side chick doesn't get to be happy as if a hoe inserting herself into someone's union deserve any type of happiness because she wanted to 
humble Mel, she took that approach. Mel steps in the room and owns it. Every time she walks in, there's a light shined on her. Her head is always held high, even when she's facing adversity, when they feel like she should be drowning in her sorrows. And a lot of times, because Mel doesn't drown in her sorrows, they are not able to seemingly be empathetic with her because they are jealous of just how strong she holds her head up through these situations because in my opinion they wouldn't be able to do the same things and we clearly see that i'm going to show you guys clips of libido the mule and cancer hunter being in multiple therapy sessions and it's just completely going over her head one thing that's also interesting she's always jumping in the line of the fence for her husband she's always being a linebacker for him when he can't even protect her when they did the interview after he embarrassed her about her turning over and suffering through it on Fox Soul with Funky Dineva and Claudia. He basically blamed her and said, if she was doing something for me, she would have let me know. She's not, go she shouldn't, she shouldn't have just suffered through it without letting me know and basically blamed her in my opinion. My point is we consistently see Libido the Mule sticking her neck out in a line of defense for her husband when he's never protecting her. And that is what male identified women do. They protect men, especially the men that don't protect them because they want the validation from these men. But the gag is men like that are never going to protect you and validate you. Men that need protection from women typically ain't shit because why the hell will your big ass expect me to protect you? And I can nurture your wounds, but I ain't stepping into the line of defense for no man. That's not very feminine. In no way. Yet we see Kimmy and Letitia always taking bullets for their husbands. Where we always see their husbands continuously disrespect them and embarrass them and laugh in their face. And it's the fact that, and the fact that Mill is living in her truth so hard and being completely transparent, her sharing that type of information, their response, in my opinion, proves to me they also suffer with some of those same issues. I believe Libido the Mule was looking at Mill when she said that and admiration and envy because in my opinion Kimmy too deals with the same things when she's dealing with cancer hunter because let's be real right now they're complaining about her low libido cancer hunter is also a man that you will see in the clips that I leave in this video complains about not being able to have sex not only every day, but multiple times every day. If that doesn't shoot the libido down, I don't know what does. So while libido the mule have her linebacker gear on, she should be honest on how it makes her feel that her husband want to treat her like a mule and bend her over every day, multiple times a day. Because libido the mule, we're no fool. Even the freakiest of women can't do that or don't want to do that. It's not even about a can't, don't want to. Nobody wants to live like an object, like a mule like a slave and that is what your husband have continuously shown us that you are to him so while you got your linebacker gear on running in the line of defense for him understand you look a mess each and every time and I'm not really sure how football work I'm not sure if the linebacker is on the offense or the defense but you look in a mess love and them acting so shocked is an attempt to try to humiliate her because we are all women let's stop trying to act like every man know how to hit the g-point most of these suckers you gotta teach to do it right and libido the mule and leticia i'm almost willing to bet y'all are the type of women that allow your man to just get up in you any way that they want based on the way that you allow them to treat you within your marriage you guys do not give me the vibes that you are teaching your man how to love you properly and I mean in each and every way if you can't communicate with him on how to love you properly I damn sure don't believe he's doing it you know, and not that any of us care, but since we got to talk about libido every other episode, and now we're touching on the topic of the cancer hunter, and Mel has now shared with us that that nasty ass weirdo she claimed was a husband never really satisfied her. We're just touching on the topic because we're grown. But again, these are male identified women. They won't be honest to save their life. A real woman knows that every man don't necessarily know how to hit certain spots and every Everybody hits differently just depending on what they're into and clearly if you're watching what we have watching like they show and shout out to the producers pause the producers have shown the flashbacks and I really appreciate that I think they did a good job with the flashbacks 
this episode and I believe the last episode. But they flash back to Mel basically saying that she wanted him to talk a little greasy to her and him basically saying no about that. As women, how hard is it to believe that a man would be selfish about getting his before you get yours considering most men are selfish in that way or most men can be selfish in that way. And that's not anything anyone is saying. That's a statistical fact across the board across the board we don't even have to throw a race on it love so yeah male identified women are so disingenuine and they're gonna always be on the opposing side of the woman and libido we also peeped how male walked in and you didn't really speak to her and i mean i guess if you don't want to speak to her you don't have to speak to her nobody cares that you're not speaking we are just peeping the vibes you're a hater because although you don't speak you're always ready to have a conversation about her business and then you were glaring into her soul because libido want to be the sexy one we're going to talk more about this but i wanted to put this debuncture together and i hope you guys would like it tisha was also glaring into mill's soul and her even saying that look she's so into herself I've been around those type of girls and those type of women and those are the girls that are envious of you. They are jealous of the fact that you are so into yourself because they don't have that sense of security. They don't understand where that type of security comes from because they are always so insecure. She's always going to compare herself to Mill because Mill is the type of woman that she just do not know how to be. She was raised by a woman that have always played her in a competitive state to other girls and other women so when Letitia said I feel sorry for you there's no need to feel sorry for Mel what you should do is feel sorry for yourself that you continuously stay in a situation that doesn't mean you any good and who are we to say anything but you clearly are insecure and your husband play a huge role in that and rather you try to continue to humiliate and humble another woman for living in her truth and being being transparent about her highs and lows of life and marriage you should find a new storyline because walkie talkie Mel's baby mama revealed that you had a bbl and i think that you don't look that nice considering the fact now i would say that okay you look decent all right you got a little decent little body or whatever you know is it's you however now that i know that you got a bbl i just feel like you over there wasting fucking money but that's enough you know let's get into it oh and then another thing when Letitia was like oh have you talked to him about it ho are we not why and this is what I'm saying like I just don't like male identified women they try to play in your face that nice nasty it's one thing to be nice nasty with people that are actually playing with you and trying you but to just be nice nasty because somebody living in a truth and they being themselves that really aggravates me because it just shows that you are envious not only that but you're showing your hand at the end of the day their intent to humble male ends up being humiliating and embarrassing on them each and every time y'all go ahead and check out this debuncture in my opinion this is the perfect example of what a male identified woman is and that is libido the mule the goalpost is always changing most times they are shady and slide toward other women that they are envious of the women that have the lifestyle that they want they can never make a union with and ultimately what ends up happening they end up male identified women that is groveling for men or just to have the validation or the attention of a man or just to even have a man around them in their presence or in their bed while then begging for the same things that they try to blame the other woman for leaving for not that man not giving them the thing that they were requesting oh so how you see her wanting him to hang things up and build things those are the things that walkie talkie was doing for Mill, or how walkie talkie was active and involved in his kids life those are the things that she wants for angry balls and because she was just able to have a man she blamed Mill for basically not being grateful enough for the little bit that he was doing for her because in our community when men do the bare minimum when you hear just a little decency in a man women grovel to that because it's so rare in our community it really don't even have to be rare if women held themselves to a certain standard a hierarchy and they 
they didn't grovel to dirty, disgusting men, then more things would be normal than not. But if women are continuing to compete for the attention and validation from men, whether good or bad, we're going to continue this cycle. Libido the Mule is a walking contradiction. Look how the tables have turned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the post notification bell so you guys are up to date each and every time that I upload. High, high split, boobies all out coming up to him and I'm like girl not today we're not gonna do that we're here for a tasting not a husband and I had to go smash him up I saw that girl in the red dress eyeing you for oh, 15 years get you no it gets you a lot more than this <laughs> if you take the, if you take this then we're good then why do you have to go out of the country by yourself like those was like red flags going up like I've never been to Africa before so it's like why would we do that together as our first time I just want to dismiss you know over there my phone doesn't work really you know we're on a different time zone mm -hmm. and it's just like I wanted to break away from this I have a lot of responsibilities on me so I'm like I think it would have been a nice trip for us to do together but you didn't even offer you know for us to do it together it was just like it's something I want to do for me but you know what I just needed to just get away the only thing you could do is trust your husband so what happened was I found wow. a picture of a girl in Marcel's phone yes and it had hearts on the, on the uh, reply. Was it a naked picture? It was. It was, it was a booty shot. It was yeah. an ass, it was shot. Shot. It was an ass shot. And so I screenshot and sent it to her, and I was like, what the and This is your man. Yes. Look at the screen. That's mine. And, and, I, that, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what you're going to settle for. I'm going to stick beside him. The blue. Okay. She just sent me a picture. Out of the blue. He said what? That's exactly yeah, what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. What, what did he say? A midday's work day's surprise. Work yeah, surprise. You're right. you, know what, you know what's funny? The word surprise. You're talking about my marriage. You no. knew what I was going through. It's our last night in Vegas, so we're going to have a nice dinner to close the trip out. Um, and I have just a little bit of surprise before dinner. We're going to make a quick stop. If you really want to surprise me, you might want to plant a threesome. What? In Vegas, so we know anything goes. And we're here to celebrate love and friendship. And we're here to celebrate our 15th year anniversary. Yeah. Yes. So out of this group, there's a lot of love in here. So who knows? Anybody want to do any type of recommitment? I don't, I don't know how this is happening. Like, I don't know if we're, this is a test. Like, I bet he can't say no in public. But I think that I'm going to renew my commitment to say no. I'm not renewing my vows. That's what I renew. This is an open opportunity here. Awkward. This is awkward. So if anybody here that would like to... And we were thinking it could be a commitment of anything. So you can re recommit to working together we... peacefully. It, you is a, is a general term that, that can fit, the shoot fits. So, Who does it fit? It fits 15 years. We're here in Vegas. Oh, no, no. We're not talking about everyone to come celebrate. We're just talking so about today is a recommitment. Mm, I like that, Tiffany. So, Letitia, I have a question. Has the frequency of sex changed since you've been married? Because I listened to your interview, mm -hmm. and you said you scheduled <laughs> sex at 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. So then I'm like, well, what happened to 9 p.m., 8, and 7? <laughs> and, and, and how do you manage that, though? Yeah, I mean, listen, don't get it twisted. Marcel talk a good talk, but, he you know, he don't get it all the time like that. So we have several businesses, and we have three kids. So my schedule is crazy. So, yes, I have to schedule it on my calendar. It's on my calendar. You know, we're going to wake up at 4.35 a.m., Get it in right quick and um, get our day started. Sounds like a chore. Oh, yeah, well, hey. <laughs> it's a plan. <laughs> Just like we have to schedule date night, it is a part of my schedule. Like sometimes, hey, Tisha, you need to go down on your man today. It's on my planner. It's Are on you my serious? schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marso, how do you handle that? You know you got to fix that. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a problem, and <laughs> believe it or not, that might be a problem. So, thank you for that. We got our argument now. Is anything? Would you do? Would you would you over? Or you like no? I, I meant it exactly. Anytime my wife feels like she's not protected by whatever I do, that's my job. 
-hmm. That's why God gave her to me, is to make sure that I have a covering and protection over her at all times. And if she feels like my words are crass, then I'll tell you my words. Um, I'm not one of those people that say, man, I said what I said. I, now, mind you. Oh, right. If I could, I would press a delete button in this inner. And so it tickles me when people say, oh, we see him stepping up. And I knew who I married and I had no doubt that he was going to he was going to carry me. You know how you see that um, that poem about Jesus carrying the person through the through the, the footsteps. And when they look down, they only saw one. I knew he was going to pick me up. It was no doubt. No doubt. Y'all might have doubted. I never did. I pull up Roto window down. Yeah. I pull up Roto window down. Oh, it's not in the kids of anybody. That's why I'm not spending my life.